Hey guys, welcome to my 30 upcoming PC simulation games for 2018 and 2019 list. Now, when we talk about simulation and games, it can be confusing as to what we're talking about. It could be anything from hyper-realistic, real-life, one-to-one simulators to more game-like management tycoons, sandbox constructions, or even survival lifestyle sims. For the purpose of this list, I will be focusing on the more gamey ones, not just because I want to focus on simulation games, but also if I didn't, the list could go on forever. So if your favorite is missing, just comment down below and let everyone know and to basically add it to the list. Those are bonus games written in the description. And do remember that I have whole other lists dedicated to city builders and space games, so don't freak out that none of those are here. All right, now let's get started. First, we've got Parkitect by Texel Raptor. This is a theme park business simulation game where you construct and run a theme park, design rides, set up efficient infrastructure for supplies, hire staff, and keep everyone happy. There's also a bit of a Big Brother vibe with detailed monitoring of visitors' behavior and hiding of behind the scenes stuff. We've had a few theme park management games in recent years, and not all have been great. Parkitect entered early access on Steam in 2016, however and it's gotten very positive reviews. It looks simple, but it could be one of the more addictive theme park management sims, so hopefully it continues with frequent updates and completes over the next couple of years. Then we have Farm Manager 2018 by Cleverson Software. Manage your own farm, expand your business, produce cheap products and sell them for profit, and breed animals. There are also seasons, campaign, scenario, and free game modes, and Steam Workshop modding integration. It looks like there's a lot of detail to it, and it has some interesting mechanics setting it apart. However, we haven't seen too much yet, and it's always hard to tell how these things will turn out. It says it's coming soon on Steam though, so we should get a better look soon. Also, I know usually farming simulators are the big thing, but Farm Manager is more of a gamey business tycoon, which is why it's listed here. If you're looking for upcoming farming simulators, you can check out Pure Farming 2018, Cattle and Crops, or Farmer's Dynasty. Next we have Parkasaurus by Washbear. Do you remember Dino Park Tycoon? Well, this one looks a lot like that. Plan, design, and construct your own dinosaur theme park while keeping your dinos and visitors happy. Discover new technologies, develop a special bond with each dino, and make money. The cartoony art style might put some people off, but from the trailer, game mechanics seem solid. It should be entering early access on Steam in the first half of 2018, then we'll have a better idea if it's turning out good. And then we've got Prehistoric Kingdom by Shadow Raven Studios. Sticking with dinosaur tycoons, this one has a bit of a more realistic look while still being about zoo management and theme parks. Promising total control in terms of building your park, breeding extinct animals, researching, managing, and customization. There are various game modes too, including a campaign, challenges, sandbox, and staff mode where you play an actual keeper. Nicely, there's a free demo on Steam right now, so even though the release date is TBA, you can go have a look at it. Also, while we're on dinosaurs, in case you're wondering where Jurassic World Evolution is, it's listed over at the city building list for various reasons, specifically because that's on a bit more of a grander scale. Next up, we have Project Hospital by Oxymoron Games. A theme hospital spiritual successor, looking a bit more serious though. Design and build your hospital, manage your staff, and diagnose and cure patients with hundreds of medical conditions. The art style is very different from theme hospital though, and seems to be going in a bit more of a realistic and serious direction. That could make or break how much you like the game, and it might hit a bit too close to home with some people. It will be interesting to see if the game can hold up on the nostalgia front without that quirky humor. But if you do like the look of it, then definitely check it out. And then we've got Two Point Hospital by Two Point Studios. What's this? Another theme hospital successor? This one has a few extra things going for it though, as Two Point is made up of ex-Bullfrog developers, and it seems like they're maintaining the ridiculous medical conditions and style of humor from the original game. If you played the original, you should know what to expect. Designing the layout of your buildings, curing patients with weird problems, managing staff, and this time you can collaborate and compete with friends in multiplayer challenges. 
Not much gameplay has been shown off yet, but they are aiming for a 2018 release. We can basically hope for a newer, better theme hospital, but whether the developers can do it remains to be seen. Next we have Software Inc. by Core Dumping. Run your own software company as you construct and design buildings for optimal working conditions. Hire people, defeat the competition, and manage your employees. Visually, it does look on the simple side, but it's an early access and gotten very positive reviews on Steam. If you like the look of gameplay footage, you'll probably like it, but it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Then we have Starship Corporation by Coronado Games. A sci-fi simulation game, part turn-based, part real-time with ship design, crew and AI tactics, a galaxy to explore, research to conduct, and a business to run. Building and designing is key here, and it looks good at first, but it has been getting few and mixed reviews for its early access on Steam. It is, however, getting regular updates, so hopefully it works out the kinks over time. Next up we've got Initiative Red Dawn by Indelve. Here we have an aerospace business simulation game akin to Kerbal Space Program but more on the management side and set in the current space race inspired by NASA. It's promising competing against thousands of players per server, co-op play, base building, hiring teams, a tech tree, corporate war, and building space stations, a moon colony, or even establishing a Mars base. Although it's showing some promise, unfortunately it failed to reach its goal on Kickstarter, but development continues on a smaller scale. It will be interesting to see if the multiplayer aspects can really hold its own in the genre, or if it just won't hit its mark. And then we have Transports by Jens P. Behrens. There's no getting around the comparison, this looks like Transport Tycoon Deluxe. However, it is also promising dynamic cities with needs, 40 different goods across 39 different industries, and up to 20 computer opponents with sabotage agreements and buying out competitors in a sort of off-world trading company thing. Although it does seem to have some gameplay to set it apart, it will be in direct competition to the currently very popular Open TTD. It might be interesting and is going into early access on Steam, so we can all get a good look and judge for ourselves. And next we've got Production Line by Positech Games. A modern car factory where you design and assemble parts into a whole with tons of complexity. Break complex tasks into small segments and fix inefficiencies as you go, and the pieces snake along the production line. Looking like an indoors factorio, I know a lot of people are going to be into this, but the realistic setting could be a pro or a con depending on what you prefer. It's in early access on Steam right now, with few but very positive reviews. So if you like the look of it, you can jump in now with some bugs and stability issues, or you can wait until it's more developed. Then we have Factorio by Woob Software. A massively popular game, you probably don't need me to tell you much about this automated factory complex building and resource management sim. Here you set up intricate and interconnected systems to harvest, process, and manufacture using your planning to keep everything automated and running smoothly. There are also some aliens to deal with. Being in early access on Steam since 2016 with overwhelmingly positive reception, it's been a while and probably will be a while more, but there's obviously enough in the game right now to compel for endless hours. Next up we've got The Universe Sim by Crytivo. If farms, parks, and factories are too small for you, how about managing whole planets? A kind of god game management sim, you conquer planets, research technologies, advance from the Stone Age to the Space Age, endure disasters, and be a god with restorative and destructive powers. It's an interesting take on the genre, and its epic scale does set it apart. It'll be going into early access first, but there's no fixed dates right now, and actual gameplay is a little unclear. There was also a successful Kickstarter way back in 2014, raising almost $400,000, and it's been a long while. It could be good, but considering this was announced so far back, and it's still not publicly playable, development is slow. Hopefully once it's more available, it hits the ground running. Then we've got Verdant Skies by Howling Moon Software. 
Go from being an agriculturalist to a genetic engineer, trading rural charm for science in this life simulation game inspired by Harvest Moon. Splice your own plant genetics to perfect your crops, do various activities like fishing, and build relationships. The hand-painted aesthetic is nice but can look a bit clunky in places, and gameplay at times can go from seeming deep and complex to simplistic. Mod support is also a thing though. It could be good and is going into early access on Steam in 2018, but with competition like Stardew Valley, a game like this needs to have some strong unique points to hold its own, or it might just get lost in the crowd. Next we have Riot Civil Unrest by Leonard Menchiari and IV Productions. After seeing the trailer years ago and it looking amazing, this one is finally in early access on Steam, a Riot simulation game where you play as the police or the angry horde based on some of the world's most notable incidences. The gritty pixel art style captures the setting well and it's been getting mostly positive reviews on Steam. Unfortunately development is a bit slow and in its early access state it has a steep learning curve, controls and the UI can be weird, there are balance issues, and the game doesn't explain itself very well, which can be frustrating. All those problems can be fixed over time though, so if you're interested, I'd keep an eye on it until it polishes up a bit. And then we've got Empires of the Undergrowth by Slug Disco Studios. From Sim Ant to Empire of the Ants and now Empires of the Undergrowth, we have a new ant colony management game. It's fast paced with some RTS mechanics where you excavate your nest, store food and raise your brood, while on the surface you claim territory, gather resources and overwhelm fearsome arachnids, not to mention competing with rival colonies. This has been in development for a while and is now in early access on Steam with very positive reviews, though in its current state it might be a little shallow or bare bones. Hopefully development continues at its current brisk pace and it fleshes out by early 2019, which is when they intend to complete it. Next up we have The Guild 3 by Golem Labs. Alright, here's one that's unfortunately not doing so well. I'm gonna mention it though as it still has a chance to save itself, but it's been in early access on Steam now with mostly negative reviews. It's slow, buggy, and simply doesn't live up to the older titles in the series. The bad reviews haven't deterred the devs though, and updates are still coming regularly. It's not looking great at the moment, but maybe they could get things back on track. Or maybe they won't. We'll have to wait and see. Then we have Besiege by Spiderling Studios. Here's one that blew up a few years ago when it hit early access on Steam in 2015, and this physics-based medieval building simulation game is still going strong. Piece together mechanical contraptions to reach your objectives and frequent updates are a thing, most notably at finally getting multiplayer and a level editor. It has been in development for a while, but it's intending to finish within another year, which may or may not happen. But with overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam, this one is very well liked, and if you're interested in what you see, you'll probably like it too. Next we've got The Last Leviathan by Superpunk Games. Kind of like Besiege, but with boats. It's a physics-based shipbuilding and destruction game. Construct battleships to destroy your enemies and see monsters in various game modes along with community mods. It's been in early access on Steam since 2016, and although it hasn't gotten nearly the reception Besiege got, it still has mostly positive reviews. Unfortunately, there are a lot of reports of it being poorly optimized, and if you don't have a powerful PC, it might not run very well, and it is still in need of more content. Generally though, it's decent if you like the theme and this kind of gameplay, and with more time they might be able to work out the issues. And then we have TerraTech by Payload Studios. For one more vehicle builder, here you design, construct, and command a fleet of unique vehicles as you battle your way across the lawless frontiers of new alien worlds for glory and profit. Craft your vehicles as you play with three corporate factions in campaigns, sandbox, or gauntlet game modes. It's in early access on Steam with very positive reviews, and the fleet of vehicles approach does set it apart, though the theme, look, and sound might not be for everyone. Generally, if you like vehicle construction games and like the look of gameplay, go check it out. And next we've got Automation by Camshaft Software. 
Create, design, and manufacture cars in this car company tycoon game. You'll be able to design functioning engines in immense detail and manage the business side of things as you have the flexibility to shape your own cars. It's been in early access on Steam since 2015 with few but very positive reviews. However, it's tipped over into mixed reviews more recently as development is slow and there are still stability issues. And the lack of cohesive mechanics can even mean that it's barely a game at this point, despite being in the works for so long. It could be a great game eventually, but don't expect it to complete anytime soon. And just be warned if you want to buy into early access right now. And then we have Wreckfest by Bugbear. Over-the-top, reckless racing, promising true-to-life physics simulation and damage modeling. The soft body and breaking apart of the vehicles is a satisfying thing to experience, and there's some crazy stuff you can mess around with. It has been in early access on Steam since 2014, which is a long time, and it's gotten mixed reviews up until recently where it's now turning to very positive, after a lot of content has been added. That might have something to do with THQ Nordic picking it up and helping it along. Now that it's got some backing, it's got a better chance of being finished, so if you're interested, keep an eye on it. Next we have Jalopy by Minskworks. Take a road trip through the Eastern European territories set during the fall of communism in this car PG driving simulation game. Upgrade, maintain, and care for your vehicle, keeping a close eye on everything from the state of your tires to the condition of your engine to the space in your trunk. You'll have to scavenge for scraps and smuggle contraband to keep your finances going. Enjoying very positive reviews on Steam since its early access release in 2016, though it has its share of bugs and content is a bit limited right now. I suppose if you enjoy driving around and cars, you're gonna like this one. Then we have My Summer Car by Amistech Games. On a similar note, we have this one. This is a car maintenance, driving, lifestyle, permadeath thing. You can build a car from scratch piece by piece, and if you build it wrong, you'll probably crash and die. Do random jobs to cover your food, drink, and fuel expenses as you enjoy the finished summer. And overall, the developer has an interesting presentation style with a website straight out of the 90s and trailers that set itself apart. Honestly, it does look great, though don't jump in expecting an easy time as not much is directly explained to you and you're gonna have to figure things out as you go. Overall, pretty interesting. Go check it out if you like what you see. Next up we've got Occupy Mars The Game by Pyramid Games. In this highly technical open-world sci-fi sandbox game, you help colonize Mars, explore the landscape with a day-night cycle, build your base, fix broken parts in functioning detail, upgrade your vehicles, and survive the harsh environments. Aiming for a 2018 release, it looks like the previous car maintenance games but in space and with more base building and electronics. That just might be exactly what you're looking for, though at the moment little gameplay has been shown off, so I'd wait for a closer look before jumping in. Then we've got Medieval Engineers by Keen Software House. Build and maintain cities, castles, and mechanical contraptions along with terraforming the landscape in this medieval engineering sandbox game. Buildings have structural integrity, voxel terrain, and destruction in a fully interactable world. Being in early access since 2015, the game has come a long way, but it's struggled to keep up with its counterpart, Space Engineers. And although overall it has mostly positive reviews on Steam, it's now leaned into mixed reviews more recently. It's still getting regular updates though, so maybe as it gets more developed it will gain more traction and appeal. Next we have Scrap Mechanic by Axolot Games. A machine-filled multiplayer sandbox game. Here you have the ability to control, transform, and programming your creations sets the game apart and allows some impressive constructions, even like a house that transforms into a vehicle. Survival mode is also planned, but it's unclear when that will be. And it has already been in early access since 2016 too, so a full release might be quite a ways off. Regular updates and very positive reviews on Steam though, this one's shaping up to be very well liked by the community. And then we've got Oxygen Not Included by Clay Entertainment. 
This is a space colony management simulation game from the creators of Don't Starve with a bit of Rimworld feel added in. Manage your colonists as you dig, harvest, build, and maintain a subterranean asteroid base, and things like power lines and piping add to the complexity and possibilities. It's been in early access since 2017 and has a ways to go, but updates are regular and generally sizable too. With very positive reviews on Steam, it's been received well, but if you're looking for a complete experience, you might want to wait for it closer to full release. It is already fun in its current state though, you might just run out of new things a bit faster than you'd like. And then we've got Rimworld by Ludeon Studios. This is a very popular sci-fi colony sim driven by an AI storyteller with its own personality. Three survivors crash land on an alien planet and you have to help them build a base and survive the harsh environment, along with hostile raiders, tribes and life forms. Colonists have needs, there's tactical gunplay, psychology, health, seasons, pets and way more than I can mention here. I like to say a word of caution for each of these games, so it has been in early access since 2016, which is quite a while, and the art style can be a bit simple for some, but with overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam and regular updates, you'll probably love this game if you like the look of some gameplay footage. Finally, we've got Astro Near by System Era Softworks. Explore and exploit distant worlds in this game of aerospace industry and interplanetary exploration set in a 25th century gold rush. Build a base, manage power, reshape terrain, extract resources, and play an online co-op with friends. Proper weather and environmental hazards, along with dedicated service support, are meant to be coming in 2018 too. Starting out as one that didn't immediately get a lot of attention, through 2017 it's been a breakout hit, and with more content being added regularly, it's becoming a solid experience. The devs do warn that it's still in alpha though, and you may want to wait until beta or full release before buying the game. Though if you like the look of it and are into survival simulation crafting games, this should be right up your alley. And now for some bonus games! I do think Beam NG Drive deserves a mention as a vehicle simulator. Aquanox Deep Descent and Subnautica are kind of simulation games, and they're getting closer to release. MechWarrior 5, some could consider a mech simulator but it's kind of more of an action game. And I did mention earlier that if you're looking for farming simulators you can check out Pure Farming 2018, Cattle and Crops and Farmer's Dynasty. And as a special mention, apparently Animal Farm, that's right, based on the book, Animal Farm is getting a game, and it sounds like it might be kind of a farm management thing with an Orwellian theme to it. Nothing really has been seen yet, so we'll just have to wait and see for that one. And there are also more realistic simulators mentioned in the description down below. And that's it! 30 upcoming simulation games that should be releasing through 2018 and some into 2019 depending on their development. Which ones are you most excited about? Also, what kind of simulation games are you most into? Tycoons, vehicles, or sandboxes? Or maybe something else? Now, if you'd like to see more upcoming games, you can check out the other lists on the channel sorted by genre shown at the top of the video, like the city building and space lists, for many more upcoming PC games, or my Gamer Encounter series where I take a much more extensive gameplay look at specific games. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.